Thanks for joining us on Nationwide on NTA. I am Nolin Ebel Ame. President Muhammadu Buhari earlier today in Ogun State inaugurated some projects by the state government. State House correspondent Adam Musambo who reports that this is the president's first official visit in 2022 says the president inspected a ceremonial guard of honor mounted by a detachment of the Nigerian army. President Buhari, who started his military career in Ogun State, sees the visit as virtually a homecoming, and the reception accorded him was befitting and remarkable. Our promises made, promises kept. <laughs> These lofty projects could not have materialized without a huge investment and commitment to security of lives and property. This has made Ogun State, <coughs> excuse me, one of the safest and most peaceful states in the country and the investor's destination of choice. Also inaugurated by the president are the Gateway City Gate Monument, 42 kilometers Shagamu Interchange Shabiokuta Dual Carriage Way to link Lagos Ibadan Expressway, as well as two housing estates for low, medium, and high income earners at Kobakwe and Okemoson. Joel Popola reports that the constructed 14.5 kilometers Ijebuo de Mojoda Ekpe Expressway is one of the landmark projects initiated by the Dapo Abiodun led administration. It was an epoch making day for residents of Ijebu land, most of whom have been waiting patiently for the arrival of the president to inaugurate the 14.5 kilometers road connecting Ogun State to Lagos. President Muhammadu Buhari was accompanied by his host, Governor Dakbabiodu, and his Lagos State counterpart, Babajide Sonwolu, officially inaugurated the project. <laughs> Earlier, Governor Dakwabiodun described the project as a catalyst for economic development as it will aid in development along that axis. The governor noted that many investors are already eager to maximize the full potentials of the road. This road connects Lagos State, State through the Lekki Industrial Corridor. The Lekki Industrial Corridor is where we have the Lekki Free Trade Zone, the Downtown Refinery, among the enthusiasm of having a each free drive along the road is already generating excitement among the people with this initiative, it is now a jolly good ride to Lagos, with travel time now drastically reduced. In Ijebudi, Joel Bukbola, NC News. In other news, reactions have trailed the federal government's lift-off Twitter ban, which is effective from 12 a.m. January 13, 2022. ICT correspondent uh, Joseph Johnson, while following the development, reports that there is a sense of gratitude in the public domain, especially for users whose livelihoods were affected by the suspension. Okay, let me bottom line this for you by rephrasing a nursery rhyme. It is no longer fly away Twitter, but rather it is now come back Twitter, meaning the bluebird is back in town. Now, 
It is believed that most Nigerians, especially lovers of the platform, stayed up late at night to confirm if the lift on the suspension was indeed true. Well, I did too. And as expected, tweeting and retweeting have since resumed, with perhaps some still trying to figure out or recall their handles and passwords. But as for yours truly, I got it all figured out. The federal government's decision to lift the suspension on Twitter operations after over six months is coming on the heels of an earlier dialogue between Twitter and the government of Nigeria, leading to Twitter agreeing to fulfill all conditions which address legal registration of operations, taxation and management of prohibited publication in line with the Nigerian laws. Some Nigerians who heaved a sigh of relief on the lifted suspension commended the federal government for the action. And now that it's resolved, I'm hoping that we can uh, have some restoration of what has been lost. A lot of people were thrown out of business. A lot of people simply did their business on Twitter. Because Twitter has a huge demography that cuts across cultures and boundaries across continents. I don't see that repeating itself. However, the case of fake news and the likes, there are ways that can, it, can be, it can be managed. Uh, for me, it's a welcome development. The stress of buying newspapers every day to be reading page by page, it has gone with your Twitter. You just go to the trending stories. So, Shut of Twitter made me, you know, move to and focus on Instagram and other options, which is good. I mean, it even helped me, I would say. Recall that in June 2021, the federal government announced the suspension of Twitter after the social media platform deleted a tweet by President Muhammad Buhari, which led to telecommunications companies eventually blocking access to Twitter after receiving a directive from the Nigerian Communications Commission NCC to that effect. As a result, research has shown that Nigeria's economy and Twitter lost billions of naira to the shutdown of the platform's operations since it came into effect. That's all in the past now as both parties are off the table and forging ahead with the bluebird on one hand and caution on the other. So, get tweeting Nigeria. Joseph Johnson, NTN News. Thank you, Joseph. To speak more on the lifted ban is an ICT expert, Nasir Sadiq, with us on Nationwide. You're welcome. Thank you, Noel. Thanks for having me. All right. Over six months of suspension of uh, Twitter operations by the federal government, and of course, is lifted by the federal government. What is your um, take on this development? Um, uh, it, uh, this is a good opportunity because we are talking about a uh, situation whereby the entire world is moving away from the oil-based economy. We're talking about the digital economy now. And, and it's important to understand Nigeria is a sovereign nation. By sovereign means, uh, it has the capacity to detect its own laws. So what that means is Nigeria has identified an opportunity by blocking Twitter for uh, reasons that is provided. And now it's given reasons uh, for up upliftment of this. And now now it's a brand new year we're talking about building a digital economy but in the process we need to have the right conversations we need to do the right things for example um, a lot of businesses use this platform as an opportunity to trade to advertise themselves create awareness and that's one aspect but a conversation that we've not been having is about cyberbullying. Um, Twitter is a very famous platform for having these conversations around attacking people. People, Some people feel, oh, because I don't know you, so it's okay to attack. But the thing to understand is the person behind the keyboard is probably a father, a brother, a mother, and he has feelings. Mm -hmm. That leads us to the conversation about mental health. Mm -hmm. Now, the pe people you are dissing, if you like, on uh, social or on Twitter, for example, or other social media platforms, how are they feeling? because some some celebrities we've seen cases of celebrities that go actually off the radar completely because of the constant attack so all I'm saying is let's have honest conversations about each other as we build this economy as we trade on uh, uh, this platform of, of Twitter to carry out our business mm -hmm. let's try and be civil you know and we are leading up to 2023 now so there's going to be a lot of attacks across uh, across board from different um, sectors of the economy different individuals but all we're saying is 
as we do that let's be civil and um, the digital economy is, is a very broad economy and I think it's a good thing that the federal government has mandated Twitter to open an office in Nigeria what that means is it uh, Twitter and the Nigerian government can have this uh, two-way conversation around okay how do we build this economy together we are partners in this and uh, we don't need to be like seen as uh, enemies or something like that and I think it's a good thing so uh, part of the regulatory requirement is that there would be um, they would be issued they would, they would set up an office like I've mentioned then they will have a local representation so I think this is a very very good conversation that we've started with the with all the key stakeholders so that we can build a better a, a more meaningful digital economy and and I think a lot of people try to look at what's happening in other countries, but forgetting the fact that Nigeria has the right and has the capacity as a regional uh, superpower to be able to detect its, uh, the future of its own economy. And I think we're in the right path for doing that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your input on this. Thank you, Noel. We really appreciate you for coming on Nationwide. Thank you. All right. I've been speaking with uh, Sadiq Nasir, uh, who is an I I ICT expert. And uh, moving on now, the soaring demand for ShareNot and uh, its derivatives have brought to the fore the necessity for Nigeria as world's top producer of the essential commodity to capitalize on its production capacity for enhanced economic growth. This was the focus at a training organized by the Federal Minister of Trade and Investment for more than 200 rural women in Niger State. Six from the global markets indicates that China's production and processing is beyond subsistence, as it is now used as raw material production, leading to a surge in its demand in emerging markets across the world. Nigeria has a leading exporter of this valuable commodity has already motioned appropriate framework to boost its production across the country for both industrial and export purposes. Thus, capacity training program therefore seeks to walk the talk as relevant agencies and parasitas in the agro-commodities and export sector who are duty-bound to lead the charge through sensitization and enforcement of these policies took turns to intimate the garden on the gains of the initiative. We are here to promote fumigation, that is a pest control on the aspect so that we can be able to get good produce of shea nut. Realizing the importance of shea butter and yam in the international market, we are able to partner with the World Trade Organization, bringing some of the facility through the STDF projects to establish the shea butter village. They are free to come to the agency to register their product because NAVDAC is encouraging micro, small and medium scale enterprises, especially those enterprises that are into our, the local processing of agro products that are coming out from Nigeria. This modern way that we want them to train, even though the government has trained them, what will it give them? That is why they are going back to their traditional way. We want the government to support them by giving them even a village to give them a small machine. Jomai Abubakal, like many others who have been in the business of shy butter production for more than a decade, maintained that the innovative idea will achieve greater success if the women folks were supported with soft loans, which has proven difficult to ourselves. In Mina, Fatima Aliu, NTA News. Time to join Adeola in Lagos for some reports. Hi, Adeola. Hi, Nolan. The lift of ban on Twitter by President Muhammad Buhari hours ago has been greeted with great excitement and appreciation by Nigerians. Annie Daniels spoke with a cross section of Lagosians and now reports. University of Lagos there. And the topic of this course is the lifting of ban on Twitter by President Muhammad Buhari. In my church, we do do some um, programs things on Twitter. So now, since when they ban Twitter, I'm unable to access it. I'm unable to go online. Knowing that they have um, lifted the ban, it's good. A senior lecturer, Faculty of Psychology, University of Lagos, Dr. Shola Aleto, speaks on reasons for the ban. Government ban came because some people use the platform to placate the government, to abuse the government, to work against the government. So when government saw that this was going on, they couldn't bear it that to say, okay, we have to work against it for now. 
so that people can learn their lessons. The action generated so much reactions by Nigerians, both old and young. Although they are aware and are still other social media platforms, these Nigerians say they prefer Twitter to others. Information has been passed on Twitter very, very fast. It goes viral faster than any other social media. So, when the president announced the lifting of the ban on Twitter, it was a welcome development. To discourage a repetition, there were words of advice for both the government and Twitter users. They should stop the derogatory words used against each other, especially against the president. It's supposed to be used to promote the healthiness of everybody. For business, they do legal and genuine business. There should be a kind of a, a balance. So the way we use Twitter and the way the government also responds to some of the criticism. Nigerians are expected to see the social media, Twitter inclusive, as a platform for unity and national growth, and not for division. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Now, methods adopted in e-waste disposal has continued to raise dust in several fora and gatherings concerning the hazardous risk it poses to human health and the environment. Abolade Salami seeks the opinion of environmental experts on how well should electronic waste be properly disposed or recycled for other users. This heap of e-waste sites have become a regular phenomenon in some parts of Lagos, Nigeria's home to imported electronic devices. According to reports, an estimated 300 million computers and 1 billion mobile phones are produced annually, with over 40 million tons of e-waste generated globally. The volume in production has resulted to many of these electronic devices becoming obsolete and therefore discarded inappropriately, thereby providing room for technicians to take advantage of stripping these gadgets apart in search of metals to be sold, while other parts are burnt or left on dump sites to pollute the land and water. So over a period of years, if you get to that place to plant again, that particular plant picks up these compounds, and had, we call them promo bromo retardant compounds. So they pick them up, and as a result, they build up into the plant that you have planted on that soil. And they are cancer causing. That is the major things they do. While most of these electronic devices do not decompose, when thrown open as refuse, they need to adopt a cycling process of these items or proper disposal. Experts say equates to less pollution, better resource conservation, and greater business continuity. The best way I think we can dispose our electronic gadget is to have a designated area whereby the, uh, the, we can call them a designated area where the, uh, the recyclers can be on ground, where those waste can be deposited, and those that are in need of that can go to that environment now to pick up whatever the materials they have so that it won't be something that will be discarded in the environment. The clamor for a more safer climate environment, as chorused by world leaders, Environmentalists agreed is the only way to protect human from hazardous health challenges as well as aquatic and non-aquatic animals. As authorities and concerned bodies are charged to provide all the necessary material resources to properly contain waste, a change in attitude from indiscriminate dumping of refuse to an appropriate system of recovering and recycling materials safely has been suggested as crucial. In Lagos, Abolade Salami. NTN News. Those are the stories from here. We'll take a break now. When Still watching Nationwide. Welcome to Joss. The Nigeria Police Plateau State Command says it arrested and paraded 30 suspects for various criminal activities in 2021. Amongst them is one Moses Oko, suspected to be responsible for the recent murder of one Jennifer Anthony at a hotel in Jos. Ndeyan and Gang reports. Moses Oko, who is suspected to have killed one Jennifer Anthony and 300 level students of the University of Jos, who was on the run, was trailed and arrested by the police. The command in a bid to arrest the perpetrator launched an aggressive manhunt on the suspect and tactically trailed him to Benue State where he was arrested by our police operatives. So 
the suspect will eventually be arraigned in court as soon as that investigation into the case is completed. Also giving a rundown of the command's achievements in crime fighting, he says more than 20 other suspects were arrested and paraded for various criminal activities. They include culpable homicide, cultism, criminal conspiracy and trespass, as well as kidnapping and unlawful possession of firearms. We need your cooperation. We work with information. But we can perform magic when you cooperate and work with us. The commissioner emphasized the preparedness of the police to respond within reasonable time to distress calls in Jos, in Denyan, and the Abagyang, NTA News. Away from crime to health, Plateau State Primary Healthcare Development Board says it vaccinated 300,000 people across the state against COVID-19 in 2021. State Immunization Officer Luca Izang stated this in Jos while speaking on COVID-19 vaccination in 2021. Sada to Mohamed Kafa reports. COVID-19 has affected every sphere of human endeavor, with Plateau State having its fair share. Experts describe the vaccine as the surest way to reduce the spread of the virus and keep safe. Given a breakdown of activities in the state, state immunization officer says Plateau State is yet to achieve the expected coverage of 50%. For now, looking at the national uh, dashboard, Plateau is just about 8%. So we shows that uh, we have not actually uh, come out to take the vaccine as expected. He adds that 50,155 doses of Pfizer as well as Moderna vaccines are available. Those that have taken the first of a particular vaccine and they are not able to get the second dose, we always appeal that yes, they should exercise patient. Meanwhile, we request at the national level so that they can supply us with of the vaccines. We have enough vaccine at the national level. So I assure the public that anyone that have not gotten the second dose of the very one they have taken, definitely within the time frame, the person will get the second jab. He appealed to residents to avail themselves for the vaccine and maintain safety protocols in JOS. So I to Mohamed Kafa, NTA News. That report wraps it from JAWS. Nolin is back to you in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you so much, Felicia. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has inaugurated a 23-man governing board of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, with a charge to members to eschew corruption totally, as government will not hesitate to sanction all infractions. You cannot be an agency that is supposed to pretend over the fight of corruption and to be found indulging in the same malice. That should be far away from this board because that would hurt the credibility and the essence of the establishment of the commission. And you are the ones that are pivotal assign the responsibility of creating a new image for Nigeria. And your actions and activities will help in no small measure in helping Nigeria redeem its image. The addition of 200 buffalo trucks and other security gadgets to the Nigerian police force is a morale booster for personnel on the fight against terrorism and other forms of crimes in the country. President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the Minister of Police Affairs, presented the equipment procured by the Nigeria Police Trust Fund. The equipment, the president says, is part of federal government efforts to reposition the police in the fight against insecurity in the country. The ongoing reformation of the Nigerian police force by prioritizing provision of modern infrastructure to aid policing in Nigeria. Of these buffalo trucks are based on its ruggedness and ability to move fast in various geographical terrain, which includes sandy, swampy soil, 
and Roki cryptography among others. That all the items provided to the trust fund for the Nigeria Police Force were largely in line with the requisite or requisite professional specifications and they have been tested and found to be of standards that will enhance our effective and efficient policing. From Calabar, Cross River State Governor Professor Benayade has promised to increase the salaries of judges in the state. Paul Abel reports that the governor stated this during an interaction with the bench in Calabar. In Customary Court of Appeal in Cross River State, Justice Morris Energy, who appealed to the state governor to build a befitting judiciary headquarters in the state, also revealed that judges in the country have remained on one particular salary level in the past 13 years. Judges, as you see us, not only in Cross River State, all over Nigeria, from the Customary Court to the Supreme Court, have on, been on the same scale of salary for the past 18 years. Judges have never enjoyed one couple increment in their salaries. The governor, who was physically surprised at the revelation, promised to effect the necessary change. It's sad that a man that you put in such a sensitive position, you expose him to temptation. By keeping one salary for 13 years when the indices of livelihood have completely changed, it's an insensitivity, it's tying a man's hands and asking him, don't swim, but his hands are tied. Don't collect bread, but don't have money to eat. I believe that we are being unfair from the point of the executive and judicial and the legislator. Cross the state will go into the appropriate lawmaking in partnership with my legislature. By March, you will have a new salary structure. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTN News. The EFCC says it will soon commence prosecution of some alleged offenders. EFCC Chairman Abdrashid Bawa noted this while contributing to discussions on anti-corruption campaign on NTS Good Morning Nigeria. Ekemini Williams has details. Corruption is one of the pillars on which the Buhari administration anchored its campaign and this has been a priority of the government. The major agencies leading the fight, the EFCC and ICPC, say they have made reasonable achievements, though challenges exist. When it is recovered, it is like with con some conditionalities because they don't give you like their batch of funds that have been mentioned here. They don't give it to you just like that. You are told to use spend it on so-so and so. So the, the poker, well... The issues around it were the, the, the powers it took away from the agencies. So I think there is still, it's still a work in progress to fine tune it, to make it acceptable to all. Because you can't uh, be kill, st stopping something and be making something worse. On the other hand, you have to balance everything. We have a lot of uh, people that are under uh, you know, prosecution that are contesting for for, 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 for elective positions. We have some that are also elected on the platform, uh, you know, so be it. Uh, you know, we should respect the law. That is the law of the country. That is what it's supposed to be, and that is how it's supposed to be. David Ugalo, an anti-corruption expert, commended the current administration's thrust in the fight against corruption, but alleged mismanagement in the handling of recovered funds and assets, and called for the introduction of a proceeds of crime bill. You know, after this anti-corruption agency have taken the effort to recover asset, align those assets to just waste across the country is unacceptable, particularly when the country is looking for resources to finance the budget. The National Assembly are also doing their bit. Making a law is not an easy tax. It's not a one-day thing. It's not a two-day thing. It's not a one-month thing. The EFCC chairman advised Nigerians to learn to trust their leaders and respect their decisions as it is ultimately for the good of the nation. In Abuja, Hekemini Williams, NTN News.
And talking politics now, the Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima has enjoined leaders of the All Progressives Congress to take necessary steps towards a strengthening membership of the party in the state. He gave the charge during a meeting with stakeholders of the APC across the local government areas of the state. Beatrice Anyam has details. With the APC stakeholders in Imo State is to further strengthen the party at the grassroots level. Governor Hope Ozodema enjoins the stakeholders to work towards winning the people's confidence in order to attract more membership. He charges them to ensure they hold regular meetings at the electoral wards as a way of strengthening the party. If we get the party right at the world level, we have gotten the party right at both the state and national level. You must allow anybody who wants to join our party to join our party. Even if he's a, he's a sinner, when he comes in, we will make him to repent. Don't say, I don't want this man, I don't want this woman. Write down his name and admit him. The state APC chairman, McDonald Deberry, says the leaders will synergize as a family to build the party and improve the numerical strength. Everybody will go back to their local government, to their booths, and call regular meetings and make sure that the party is vibrant at the, at the grassroots level. With that, of course, there will be synergy. That will be common understanding. It's a function of building the party from the polling units to make sure that we realize one house, one family. The APC stakeholders meeting is the first to hold this year and has in attendance executive members from the 27 local government areas of Imo State. In a word, Beatrice Anyam, NTA News. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party says as one in opposition preparing to win the next round of elections at all levels, it will strive to build trust within members. Chairman of the party's screening committee for the forthcoming Oshun State Governorship election, Mohamed Bello Adoke, said this at the end of the screening uh, exercise at the PDP National Secretariat in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. Aspirants were screened ahead of the Oshun state governorship election. Although the exercise was held behind closed doors, chairman of the screening committee, Mohamed Belo Adoke, a former attorney general of the Federation and Minister of Justice, expressed satisfaction with the exercise. We ensure that we check through the checklist given to us by the party and also ensure that we work in accordance with the dictates of our conscience so that we can all work in tandem towards our common objective, which is to win Oshun state election. The aspirant says that the process was transparent. Uh, PDP actually sustained the, um, the membership of uh, the screening committee. In fact, the National Convention Screening Committee that has been made um, the standing committee for the, for the party. My expectation is that they will do what is uh, just and fair. And they have admitted that. In another development, the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Yocha Ayu, has visited all the party's facilities in Abuja. These include the party's legacy house, the People's Democratic Institute, and the national headquarters of the party, which is uncompleted. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf. NT News. Chinange is in our Enugu Network Center and standing by with more reports. Hello, Chinange. The, thank you so much, Nolin. Welcome to Enugu. The Enugu State Government has restated its commitment to the sustenance of the existing cordial relationship between the government and the labor speaking during the annual workers' prayer rally held at the State Secretariat to formally mark the resumption of duty after the festive season, the State Governor Ifani Uguani maintained that the government and the workers are partners in progress. Susan Eze reports. That you are alive in the land of the living is something worthy of saying, God, I thank you. It is a yearly routine since the present administration that the government and workers of Enugu State begin the year with a special prayer rally at the State Secretariat. Governor Ugwani, represented by the Secretary to the State Government, is grateful that six years down the line, the administration has enjoyed the grace of God manifest in many ways 
particularly in the industrial peace in the state. I want to recall that in spite of the COVID-19 and the general global lockdown in 2020, Enugu State continued to pay the salaries of workers. I want to assure you, to every worker in this state, we are partners in progress. According to the leadership of the organized labor in Enugu State, the workers couldn't have had it better, and they are grateful to the government for making workers' welfare top priority. Good governance has been sustained for the past six years. I want to say we, the civil servants, are the greatest beneficiary of this good governance. Prayers were said for peace in the state and the nation. May there be lasting peace in our land. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. It is a vital means of communication which has made the world a global village. Despite the numerous benefits of mobile phones, its addiction has become a major source of worry, especially among the youths. In this report, Chidi Okorafo takes a look at the effects of phone addiction on the society and the country at large. It has become a common phenomenon to see people giving more attention to their cell phones. Phone addiction is a behavioral habit similar to that of an internet, gambling, shopping or video game addiction, which experts say can lead to severe impairment or distress in one's life. Excessive pressing of phone has so many negative effects like cyber sex, anxiety, stress, restlessness, depression, loneliness, eye strain, psychological problem, among others. Investigation showed that the average time spent on smartphone a day is about four hours. Some will wake up in the morning, if they don't press their phone, they won't be comfortable. Some will press their phone to know what is going on. Some will, do for their, some will go for their, what we call, um, uh, their WhatsApp group, to know what, whether they have message or they don't have message. In fact, the device has the ability to completely take over the control of human beings. But unfortunately, the adults have equally fallen victim. Uh, they wake up at the morning's phone and they have refused to develop that discipline. A certain type of discipline is actually required to handle this device. Believe it or not, if the phone is taken out of your life, even in one week or two weeks, you will still live. Why the use of phones has its advantages, like ease of transacting business. It has equally ruined relationships, replacing in-person communication and influenced parenting negatively. Hence, the advice by ICT experts that limits be placed on the use of smartphones. In Enugu, Chidi Okrafo, NTN News. And those are the stories from Enugu. Nationwide continues with Nolan in Abuja after this commercial break. Do stay. Thank you for staying with us on Nationwide in Abuja. The establishment of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission has been a veritable link to connect Nigeria and its citizens abroad, as well as is the task of Nigerians in the diaspora to engage in the Nigerian economy. Beaming the searchlight on the Commission's achievement so far, Obiageli Ugoki reviews efforts and interventions of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission in the year 2021. I want to know the cause of, of, of our death. Issues buzzing on the continued maltreatment of Nigerians in the diaspora, from xenophobic attacks in South Africa to slavery in Libya, unlawful detention and killings, denial of work permits in UAE, among other issues, heralded the activities of Nigerians in the diaspora in the year 2021. Dealing with human lives, we're dealing with people, we're dealing with um, people who just need help. So you don't sit back and say, oh, I, have, I don't have money or I don't have, just do it. And that's what I've done on television anyway. So it's about, governance is about people. So whatever you can do to lend a helping hand, no matter if the challenge even to you, 
You just have to do it. Saddled with the responsibility of engaging and utilizing the human capital and material resources of this demography in the socio-economic, cultural and political development of Nigeria, NITCAM embarked on rescue missions and interventions to ameliorate attacks on Nigerians and ensure justice is served in all cases. Ali Zainab is one of such victims who got justice through NITCAM. That time around 1.30 a.m., um, the policemen just came inside our room. They just bound inside the hotel room. They were accusing of us uh, of bringing illegal drugs to their country. I know that our legal department, we received almost over 700 petitions, uh, you know, and we work with our missions abroad to follow the mandate of the president to ensure that we intervene in the cases affecting our brothers and sisters abroad. Her homecoming expressed her profound gratitude to the commission. Chairman of the Nigerian in Diaspora Commission, Abika Dabirewa, also noted that while COVID-19 is still on rampage, NITCAM, in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Nigerian missions around the world, have evacuated thousands and are still evacuating stranded Nigerians anywhere in the world. Nigerians have commended the efforts of the diasporas worldwide and the establishment of the commission by President Muhammad Buhari to engage and utilize nation's human capital resources. This achievement is demonstrated in annual diaspora remittances into Nigeria, which increased to 15.6% according to CBN Review, projecting Nigeria as the largest recipient of remittances in flows in sub-Saharan region of Africa in 2021. But now we're looking beyond remittances into investments into the economy of Nigeria. And then we have a, a, a few programs for them, the diaspora housing scheme, the diaspora mortgage scheme. On direct foreign investments, Nigerians in diaspora currently are the biggest net contributors to foreign direct investment flows into the nation. In May 2021, the commission was listed among the 20 outstanding ministries, departments and agencies of government are judged as performing in the year 2021. Other achievements of the Commission include State Diaspora Focal Point Officers Meetings, Launch of National Diaspora Policy, Diaspora Housing Program, Launch of Diaspora Homecoming, Launch of Diaspora Database Portal, the unveiling of plus 600 diaspora icons at 60, which celebrates the amazing success stories of Nigerians living in the diaspora. Speaking on food security, experts have called for enabling environment for research and development of improved seeds to mitigate adverse climatic effect on agricultural productivity. This was at a meeting on registration and release of crop varieties at the National Center for Genetic Resources and Biotechnology in Ibadan. Correspondent Kayode Oladosu has the details. In a bid to circumvent the climate change issues and attendant strains on agricultural productivity, research efforts are producing climate smart, high yielding crops with high nutritional content. The Committee on Naming, Registration and Release of Crop Varieties, Farmers and Other Stakeholders met to review and certify 11 crop seeds of 45 varieties newly discovered to boost agricultural production and food sufficiency across the country. We take each variety of each crop one by one, we, present, we consider the properties of that crop and see if it is better than what our farmers are currently growing and then we make arrangement to officially release it. Bringing in new variety of the crops, it affects gene constituent. So the gene trait is what is uh, uh, the quality, uh, what, what defines the quality. And one of such efforts highlighted at the gathering is during wheat varieties with the potential to reduce the importation of wheat products to the country. The stakeholders were unanimous on the need for better collaboration of government and the private sector to support more research and improve farmers' access to new and improved varieties of seeds. In Ibado, Kayade Oladoshu, NTA News. Involving the young ones in the steps to take in caring for the elderly in the society will assist in reducing challenges associated with old age. 
correspondent Oyeyinka Omole. In this report, examines the need for advocacy on the care of the senior citizens by the younger generation. It's unfortunate that we brand adults or old people as witches. So please, younger people, parents must make sure they make their children go closer to their grandparents. Worried by wrong societal perception of the elderly and negligence often faced by them and its effects on their health and longevity, experts in caring for the elderly believe that children need to be involved in changing the narrative. These old people, some of them are really vulnerable and they need to care for them. And in caring for them, we can start by awareness first. We can let them know that these older adults need some certain things that need them to age well in their later years, in their twilight years. We all should get passionate about old people. We should realize that what goes round comes round. We are young today. We are vibrant today. Old age will catch up with us. The initiative was welcomed by some students. Look at what they have done for us, not look at what they cannot do for us, because we are all going to grow up one day. We should always be there for them whenever they need us. Why families are implored to love, cherish and create more time for their older ones, they called on where many individuals and governments to establish more centers for the senior citizens in Ibadan, Oyeyinka Omole, NTA News. Next up is sports with 